Hey everyone, welcome to New Life Online. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. We're so glad you're here. Parents, did you know we have online kids experiences? Every week we're creating two different age-specific videos for your kids. They can have fun and learn about God all at the same time. If you have kids birth to fifth grade, you'll want to check out our videos on our Life Kids Facebook page or YouTube channel. We're so excited about today's service. Our worship leader, Jonathan McGraw, is about to lead us into worship, and after that, Pastor Mike Marchetta has an amazing message for us. Then, Pastor Adair and I will be right back here to pray with you and give you some more info. But for now, let's get ready to worship the Lord. Well, good morning, church. We are excited that you are here with us to worship, and we want to tell you today that this is not just about you know us playing some music here but it's about us all coming together as a church family to praise and worship together so we encourage you to put this on your TV and stand with us sing let the praises ring out as we celebrate who God is and what he's doing in our hearts and lives so join us today I'm coming back to the start where you found me I'm coming back to your heart No, I surrender Take me This is all I can bring Let's put those hands together as we celebrate who God is in this place today. We want to hear your clap all the way through the TV, all right? Sing it.
don't be afraid Run into wide open spaces Graces waiting for you Dance like the waves but lifted Graces waiting Where the Spirit of the Lord is there The Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be Spaces, graces, waiting for you. Seems like the weight has been lifted. Graces, waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark. To the fullness of His love For the Spirit is here Let there be freedom Let there be freedom Chains are full Fears are shaken Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit
You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. It's your breath in our lives, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lives, so we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love, you bring life to the darkness, you give hope, you restore.
Let your love just pour over us, Lord. Pour over us, pour over us, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for your presence, Lord, in this place and in people's houses. We know, Lord, as we just sang about your greatness and how great you are. And Father, as this service continues, we just pray, Holy Spirit, just fill people's hearts and lives as we just hear the word and, and your message pours over us, Lord, about how amazing you are and how amazing it is to have you in our hearts and in our lives, Lord, and we just cherish that. Lord, as believers in Christ, we love you and we praise you, God, and we give this time and this worship unto your name. God, we love you and we praise you in your holy name. Amen. Hi, friends. We know that we're not physically with you today, but hey, Ryan and I got out of our pajamas to tell you that we realize there's a lot of content online right now, and we're really thankful that you're tuning in with us today. That's right. I know it is a hard time, and I know it can be kind of stressful for us all being stuck at home. And I just want to encourage you, we can get through this together. And I know it may not seem that we're together, but you know what? There's a bunch of ways that we can connect and stay together. We're going to talk about some of those here today. So if you're like me and sometimes you're feeling a little stir crazy or you're just looking for ways to help out, there's a bunch of different ways to be connected to the New Life community. One of them is of course Facebook. Another one would be subscribing to our YouTube channel or you can go to our website, which is listed below. There's a lot of great encouraging content on there, including right now media, and you can subscribe to our weekly email list. And if you need prayer for any reason at all, and I mean any reason at all, please head on out to nlccfamily.com. We are ready for your prayer requests. And not just us, but the entire church family. We are here for you and we wanna hear what you have to say, what's going on in your life and what needs you might have. We are ready to pray and come alongside you in those times of need. Kids, we didn't forget about you either. Um, we have created some online experiences just for you. We've got things like videos, uh, some places for uh, some social hangouts, games, and- Basically, if you want to get updates, you want to submit a prayer request, you want to uh, get connected more with your New Life community, um, you can go to just the website, nlccfamily.com. Everything is there. And if you would like to give today, uh, you can continue to give through nlccfamily.com. You can text any amount to the number here on the screen, and you can also continue to mail in checks. Uh, we are very thankful for your continued giving, and it does help us continue to reach the city of Oshkosh and move God's mission forward. We are in Oshkosh for Oshkosh. Speaking of which, Ryan and I want to remind you that just because we're not physically together every Sunday or during the week, it never means that you're alone. We are here with you. We love you guys. We are here to support you. Um, sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, maybe a notepad, and get ready. Pastor Mike's going to deliver the message. Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today, wherever you are. Thanks for spending some time with us. You know, if you would, would you go ahead and grab your Bibles? We're going to continue our series in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and I want to give you a moment to do that. And while you are, I just want to share a thought that God laid onto my heart, and I, I pray that you'll receive this however the Holy Spirit uh, conveys it to you. But the thought is this, we're all online today, and we have to do it out of necessity. We're working online, our, our kids are doing schoolwork online, we're connecting with friends and family members online, and we're also online to entertain ourselves. We're trying to pass the days and pass the time, and I like to do that as, as well. I like to sit down and watch some movies with my family, and we like to watch different shows, and there's nothing wrong with being entertained. But God reminded me that when it comes to church, and especially church online, th this time is not meant to entertain us. We're not supposed to just sit back and be consumers. God wants us to participate. 
So when our worship team gets up to sing, when my family and I, when we're at home, we get up, we're off the couch, we lift our hands, we sing along, although not that loud because we're not great singers, but we try to participate because that's what God has called you and I to do, not to be consumers, not to be entertained, but to participate and to seek him and to pursue him. And that's what we want to do. And then the other thought that I had that God laid on my heart is this. Sometimes we approach God with this mindset of, God, you entertain me. And let me just say, that's, that's not the right mindset. Because God doesn't exist to entertain us. And God certainly does not exist to serve us. God exists because he wants to have a relationship with you and me. And like any relationship, he asks us to do something. There's a part that we need to play. We need to be participants. And so in our relationship with God, we need to, number one, know him. We need to love him. And then we also need to serve him. And that's really the backdrop for this series that we're in. We're calling it Fresh Air. And the idea is that God is calling you and me to spread hope everywhere we go, to be a fresh, to be a breath of fresh air. And so let me just remind you where we've been. We, we, we said that if we're going to be a breath of fresh air, we have to be, number one, motivated by grace. You know, a lot of times we have a wrong view of God. We, we look at God as this judge in the sky who's just waiting for us to mess up. We look at him as kind of the police officer. There are all these rules, and he's asking us to follow the rules, and that just takes the fun right out of life. And that's not God's heart for you and me. See, God, again, wants to have a relationship with us. And what we have to understand is that the one thing we deserve is death. Scripture says the wages of sin is death, but I'm so glad it doesn't stop there. It goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Are you thankful for Jesus today? For his willingness to pay the penalty for our sin? That we could be forgiven? That we could be free? That we could be a part of his family? See, God has done good things for us that we don't deserve. And when we truly understand that, we will serve him out of love. We will serve him out of, out of admiration. We will serve him from a place of gratitude. So we've got to be motivated by grace. And then last week we talked about how we need to mirror great lives. Again, God has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. But let me remind you, we're not going to get to where God wants us to be on our own. We need people. There are all kinds of people that God's put in our life, but we especially need to look to people that are ahead of us, to people that, that are stronger in areas than we are. And we need to seek their counsel. We need to humble ourselves and ask questions and allow them to pour into our lives. Because if we do that, we can be a breath of fresh air. Now, the, the third ingredient, the third way that we can be a breath of fresh air and spread hope, uh, let me set it up for you. Lila wanted to go to this trampoline park in Appleton. Some of you have been there. It's called Altitude. And she finally twisted her arm enough, and we said, okay, let's, let's go there as a family. And, and we quickly found out that they had more things there than just trampolines. They had this obstacle course that was about 15 feet off the ground. And Lila and I both said, hey, let's, let's try that. That looks fun. That looks interesting. So we go over to the obstacle course. They have to harness us in, and we walk up the steps. And no sooner do we get up there than Lila turns to me and says, you know, Dad, I don't think I can do this. She doesn't like heights. And I'll be honest, I don't either. So Lila went down. But I felt like it had to be a teachable moment. And I also felt like as a man, I couldn't just tuck tail and run. I had to set the example, and I had to just, in a sense, bite the bullet and do it. And so I want to show you this video clip of my gracefulness going over this obstacle course. So check this out. Scare <laughs> There, it's not moving. You're doing good. Hey, yeah, don't make fun of me. Don't, don't, don't send those comments.
comments back there, you know, making fun of me. I faced my fears, but I showed you that video clip because life is like an obstacle course. And if we are going to be a breath of fresh air, then what you and I have to do is we have to move through obstacles. Now, again, let's, let's use that obstacle course I was on as, as a picture for life. You know, sometimes we face obstacles because we create them. You know, the, the number one reason why I ended up on that obstacle course is because I decided to do it. Can I just tell you, sometimes we face some hard times in life and we go through some difficult seasons because we make poor decisions, because we decide to do something that maybe we shouldn't do, and as scripture says, we reap what we sow. Whether that's positive or negative, God always is true to his word. And so sometimes we, we just do the wrong thing. Sometimes we don't live life God's way. You know, God has a way of life that he's called us to live. And that's the best way. But when we decide to do things on our own, apart from God, let me just remind you, life's always harder apart from God. Now notice I didn't say that with God in our life, life's easy. Because it's not. Even with God in our life, we're going to face obstacles. And we're going to face challenges. But life is always harder apart from God. Because we have to carry our own burdens. And none of us are strong enough to do that. So we can create obstacles. How many of you know people can also create obstacles. That, that obstacle course I was on was created by somebody. Somebody was sitting at their desk thinking, how could I torture somebody? How could I make life scary for somebody? That's at least how I saw it. I know other people may look at it as, as fun, but I was white knuckled. My palms were sweating. My knees were shaking. I didn't know if I was going to make it through this. But sometimes people create obstacles. Sometimes people hurt us. Sometimes they manipulate us. They use us for their own plan, for their own devices, whatever it may be. And life hurts sometimes because hurting people hurt people. But people can create obstacles. And then the third thing I realized about this obstacle course is sometimes we go through hard times in life simply because life's not fair. See, I didn't realize this at the time, but when I got up onto that obstacle course, the only way off was to complete the course. There were no exits. And at one point, Lisa told me, when I finally made it to the ground, she's like, I thought I was going to have to call the fire department. I didn't know if you were going to get off of that thing. And, and life is like that. You know, the only way we're no longer going to encounter difficulties as Christians, as followers of God, is to die. Other than that, life is full of obstacles. And in order to spread grace and spread hope and be a breath of fresh air, we have to move through those obstacles. But life's not fair. And we realize that now, don't we? We're all facing this pandemic, and it's not fair. It's not fair that you can't hang out with your friends. It's not fair that your kids can't go to school and they can't do their their activities or their sporting events. It's not fair that we can't to get gather together as a church family and worship God. It's not fair. And when life's not fair, sometimes we, we get discouraged. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed. But we're reminded that we're, in an, we're, we're facing obstacles right now. And let me just tell you, the easy thing to do is quit. The easy thing to do is to be discouraged. The easy thing to do is, is to just give up. But again, God's called you and me to be a breath of fresh air. And he's asked us to spread hope. And if we're going to do that, then we have to be able to move through the obstacles. So I trust that you're there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's look at what Paul has to say about obstacles. Verse number 6, he says this. So you receive the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. Paul's talking about suffering. He's talking about obstacles. So here's where we're going today. I want to talk about what do obstacles do 
And then I want to leave you with this thought, how do we move through obstacles? Now, in order to understand what obstacles do, let's take a detour quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, because Paul references the purpose of obstacles and the purpose of difficulties. Here's what he says, starting in verse 8. 2 Corinthians 4, he says, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. I think Paul's talking about how problems and difficulties have a purpose. Obstacles are meant to do something in our life. And, and here's the thing. Just simply understand this. God doesn't use obstacles to destroy us. That's not his heart, and that's not his intention. What God does is he uses obstacles as stepping stones. Obstacles have a purpose. They're meant to accomplish something in our life. You know, we, we see obstacles as unnecessary or inconvenient or overwhelming. But God sees op obstacles as an opportunity to do something lasting in our life. I like what somebody said. They, they said this, when you face difficult times, know that challenges are sent, are not sent to destroy you. They're sent to promote, increase, and strengthen you. So think about that statement. What are obstacles meant to do? Well, they're meant to promote us. Again, God always wants to move us forward. He doesn't want us to stay where we are. And sometimes he has to ruffle our feathers in, in order to move us out of our comfort zones into what he has for us. And so understand this. Promotion from God never ever comes without a struggle. It never ever comes without a battle or a fight. You know, just think about how steel is shaped by the fire. God uses fire in difficult times to mold us and to shape our character, to make us more like Jesus. Think about coal, how pressure is needed. For Pressure is used to turn coal into a diamond. So something that we might consider rough and unpolished and ugly, God uses pressure to make something beautiful out of it. That's what God wants to do with our lives. He wants to make something beautiful out of us. And he'll often allow pressure and he'll use pressure to bring out the best of us in us, to teach us some things. And then understand that muscle is not built without resistance. And God wants to build our faith muscle. And how does he do that? Well, we have to go through some hard times. We have to face obstacles. And so... Again, obstacles are not meant to destroy us. They're meant to promote us. But promotion never comes without preparation. You see, God will never put us in a position that we are not ready to handle. All you need to do is look at David's life. David, God anointed David to be king of Israel, but that didn't happen overnight. David had to face lions. He had to face bears. He had to be the shepherd of sheep. You remember he had to face Goliath. And then he even had to face Saul and Saul's army as they went after David and tried to kill him. But God wanted David to be king of Israel. He called him to be king, but he wasn't ready. And so God used obstacles to prepare David for his calling. To, he used the trouble to promote David, and he'll do that in our life too if we allow it. So God doesn't want to take away from our life. He wants to add to our life. But sometimes our capacity to receive isn't big enough. I was reminded of this when my family went to the Christmas parade a year or so ago. Lila and I like candy. I'm a big kid at heart. I wanted M&Ms and I wanted Snicker bars, all the good stuff. So we brought just a tiny bag. That got filled up pretty quick. And then Lila's giving me candy and I'm putting it in my coat pocket. I'm putting it in my pants pockets. And I realized we, we left a lot of candy out there because our capacity to receive wasn't big enough. And sometimes that's true in our life as well. And so God will often stretch us to make room in our life for what he's planning to do. 
And then obstacles are meant to strengthen us. Again, God wants to build our faith. He wants to uh, teach us how to trust him. And one of the things that God wants to teach us how to teach us to do is to persevere. James talks about this. Scripture says that when our faith is tested, our endurance has a chance to grow. And so understand this. Pers perseverance is developed through pain and through problems. It's developed through obstacles. God wants us to run the race and finish what he's called us to do, not to quit. And so we've got to persevere in order to do that. So, so again, obstacles are meant to promote us. They're meant to stretch us. They're also meant to strengthen us. So what do we do? How do we move through obstacles? Well, let's go back to 1 Thessalonians and, and look quickly at what Paul has to say. He says this again. So you receive the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. So what's Paul saying? How, how do we move through obstacles? Well, we move through obstacles by being joyful. So let's talk about joy. What is it? Well, first, joy is a choice. It's not an emotion. It's not a state of mind. It's not some ideal. Joy is a choice. We get to choose how we are going to respond to obstacles and circumstances. And I like what Wes Stafford said. He said this about joy. He said, joy is a decision, a really brave one, about how you are going to respond to life. So, so how are you doing right now? Again, we're in a difficult time. We're, we're facing some challenges. Some of us may feel overwhelmed. How are we responding? Are, are we in despair? Are we discouraged? Are we agitated? Are we angry? Are we cussing people out? Or are we approaching this time, this obstacle, with joy, with gratitude, even with thanksgiving in our heart, not necessarily for what we're going through, but for how good God has been to us. See, joy is a choice. And then understand this, joy isn't natural, it's supernatural. We're not going to find lasting joy in this world. How many of you know, Packer fans, you're not going to find joy in the NFL draft? I heard a lot of remarks and comments about the number one pick. See, we're not going to find joy in our achievements, in our possessions. We're not even going to find joy at the bottom of a bottle. Joy comes from Jesus. When we connect with Jesus, he promises to fill us with joy. So think about it. When we have a relationship with Jesus... We actually have access to unlimited joy. Did you know that joy is a gift from God? And he wants to continually pour joy into your life. He wants to continually fill your life up with joy. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's the joy of the Lord that helps us to persevere when it would be easier to quit. When it would be easier to give up. So we move through obstacles by being joyful. And let me just remind you, let's be joyful in Jesus. Just for a moment, think about Jesus. Think about what he's done. Understand this, Jesus has a plan. See, before the world even began, God knew that in 2020, our world would be shut down with this pandemic. And let me just remind you, he still has a plan. He's not up there confused. He's not up there wondering what to do next. He's not looking at plan B. We can f face the future with hope and with confidence because Jesus has a plan. Scripture said that he who began a good work in you, he is faithful to complete it. He's faithful to finish it. God's going to finish his plan. He's going to do everything that he's promised to do. When we know that, we can face obstacles with joy. Because even now, God's got a plan, and he's going to work it to completion. Understand this about Jesus. He never wastes a difficulty, and he never wastes a hurt. Some of us are hurt right now. We're, we've been laid off. We're facing unemployment. We don't know how we're going to put food on the table or turn the lights on. He's aware of that. He understands. And some of us are, are hurting. Some of us are discouraged because we're in some difficult times. But again, I want you to understand that Jesus 
is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he is not going to waste the difficult times that we're in. He's going to continue to work in our life. He's going to continue to mold us and shape us. And so because of that, we can face even hard times with joy. And then know this about Jesus. He has the final say. He has the last word. How many of you believe that this morning? And I'd like you to do something. First Thessalonians is not a long book. If you read it from beginning to end, you could probably do it in 20 minutes. But here's what you're going to find out. At the end of each chapter in First Thessalonians, there is a reference to the second coming of Christ. And I think one of the reasons Paul puts that in there is because he wants to remind you and I of something. Yes, we're going to face some hard times. We're going to face obstacles. But understand, whether here on this earth or there in God's presence, everything is going to be okay. Why can we face the future with hope and confidence? Because we know that whether here on this earth or when we take our last breath and stand in the Lord's presence, everything is going to be okay. I've got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Why? Because Jesus is alive, he's on the throne, and he's for us, not against us. So church, we believe the best is yet to come. But if we're going to be a breath of fresh air, and if we're going to spread hope everywhere we go, we have to move through obstacles. So this week, let's move through obstacles with joy. We love you. We're praying for you. God bless. Wow, wasn't that an amazing and challenging message? I love the truth that the pastor shared. I want to encourage you to pause for a moment and ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me through this message? So wherever you are, why don't you pause for just a moment and ask him right now? Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? And if you're watching this and maybe you felt far from God, but you're ready to change that, we want to give you that opportunity today. So let's all say this prayer together. Dear Jesus, come on, say it with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me and dying for me. I repent of my sins and ask you to be the Lord of my life from this day forward. I choose today to surrender my whole life to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. If you just made that decision to surrender your life to Jesus, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. We're so thrilled for you. We have some people that want to pray with you and get you connected with some great resources to help you. Just send us a message through our Facebook page, or you can stop by nlccfamily.com and get in touch. And if you'd like prayer for any reason at all, whether it's physical healing or financial need or broken relationships, whatever it is, we have people ready to pray with you. Just message us through Facebook or our website, nlccfamily.com. If you want to get involved by being the hands and feet of Jesus to so many in need right now, or if you'd like to just get connected with us here at New Life, you can visit us at nlccfamily.com. And you can always stay up to date with what's happening at New Life through our social media channels and our website. Thank you again for joining us. We hope God ministered to you and spoke to you through today's service. If you know of any friends or family members that need to hear this message, please feel free to share it with them. We love you and we're praying for you and hope you have a wonderful week. See you next weekend.